should live in harmony with the Dharma. However, your Buddha nature will not manifest itself solely through study, because your mind is clouded by defilements such as greed, attachment, passion, and ignorance, which reading cannot cure. Therefore, one must practice, for when you follow Buddhist principles in your daily life, you discover your true Buddha nature. Many believe that Bodhidharma's rejection of texts and preference of practice came because he attained enlightenment through a nine-year stare at the cave wall, as described before. This would also explain his reliance on the teaching of emptiness, and that merits and nobility are empty, for a cave wall is simple and plain. His rejection of nobility and absence of need for acceptance from authority figures was displayed clearly in his meeting with Emperor Bu. During this meeting, he was asked, what is the noble truth in its highest sense? and replied, it is empty, no nobility whatsoever. And when asked to identify himself, he said, I do not know. Had the emperor studied Chan Buddhism, he would have understood. However, because he did not, Bodhidharma was turned away and ignored as a religious or Buddhist figure by authority figures in China for some years to come. For Chan Buddhism was still questionable to them as a valid religion or school of thought, despite its popularity among the people. One may still wonder why Bodhidharma used words and sutras if language was impossible. He explained it as such. The sutras of the Buddha contain countless metaphors. Because mortals have shallow minds and don't understand anything deep, the Buddha used the tangible to represent the sublime. People who seek blessings by concentrating on external works instead of internal cultivation are attempting the impossible. And that in theory, the words would take people to a point where they could realize this and recognize the difference between what they were taught and what they learned on their own. Though he defined the mind as places where language can't go, he clearly understood the necessity of words in the context of teaching. He also wrote hymns of praise to the Buddha, including, when he beheld how the golden dome sparkled in the sun, how its light reflected upon the surfaces of the clouds, how the precious bells housed the wind within itself, and how its rays voice rang beyond the heavens. He was clearly gifted with words, despite his relative hatred of them. Though his, his history and life may be somewhat hidden to the public, what he learned and taught spans ideas and decades of time and secures his place as a prominent figure in Buddhist history.